supposed to be one of the fastest bands around. I mean, as, I uh, speaking to the guitar <laughs> players, speaking to the guitar players, how much do you have to practice to keep that kind of speed up? I don't practice at all. I practice about <laughs> five, six hours a day. <laughs> Well, what's, yeah. the, what's going on here? Well, make some grow. I, I seriously, uh, I pick up the guitar about maybe five minutes before we go on stage. I just, you know, I, I don't know. I just don't have to practice. Just, I, I, I just play. I bus and I play all day long. It annoys people on the bus. And they ting, 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 ting. That's all he does the whole day. <laughs> until knows. we get aggravated. Mm. Well, does that make you feel really bad knowing that yeah, you have to practice really bad, six yeah. hours a day and he doesn't have to practice at all? I don't have to practice. I, I like to practice, you know. I like you to play. To keep, keep that's that's what I do. What is it with, um, I mean, there's so many different people in your audience. There's probably some thrash people, some heavy metal people, All some people, people who think that you're sp your speed metal band and other punks in your audience. What exactly, what kind of music would you call it? Heavy metal. Heavy Where's metal. Metal. Oh, okay. metal. Just metal. Rock. Huh? Just metal. Aggressive rock, that's yeah. all. Just, Just metal. metal. That's cool. Thrash music. Yeah. Crazy going nuts, have fun. Into the Pepsi Power Hour, and this is the Crow Mags. What's the song called? We gotta know. <laughs> you gotta know. <laughs> you gotta know. We gotta know. <laughs> this is like, well, I guess, what you'd call speed thrash metal. Yeah. Like it's right on the edge of hardcore. Isn't it sort of temptation to to go into hardcore and end up being called a hardcore band? Well, we we like hardcore a lot too. Like we we listen to like a lot of hardcore, but. You know, we're we're more into the metal thing, really. You know, it's like it's just like yeah, like the the fastest kind of like uh, punk or whatever. But we're like a thrash metal band. Like punk's kind of like uh, the lyrics take. Uh, it's more important than the music in punk, but metal, it's like uh, the music's more important. So it's uh, you know, it's, it's more metal. I think here in Switzerland, being more of a business type of country, it's one of the richest countries in the world. Uh, per capita, I believe it is the richest country in the world. And everyone is geared towards business. And the music scene is no different. And I feel a lot of the bands have said, we're going to do this, and we're going to do this, and we're going to make it. And Martin and Tom have said, we're going to do this kind of music because we believe this is extreme and this is what we want to do. You know, not worrying about the money, not worrying about if they're going to work. Let's do it. And they were approached by a record company. And this is an original uh, spark that's in a band that can make the difference between breaking it and not making it. What I'm finding here, being in around Zurich, is that very few Swiss bands have the rebellion and the aggression necessary to be truly called rock and roll. But Celtic Cross does. Now, why is that? Again, I feel it's because we're not worrying about getting day jobs or buying the nicest clothes or having a nicer car than the next guy. We want to do music, and we only do music. We're professional musicians, and we fight, and we're hungry to play music. That's all we do. And so uh, we have to be good at it, and we have to be hungry. and we were there. started in 1982, it was sort of me and Andy at the very first, and we just messed around his garage, you know, with some instruments that we got, we just, you know, we were in the music, some cover yeah, played some cover tunes, and just trying to get into it, and then Den and Gus came in on guitar and vocals, actually, Den was just singing, we didn't have a bass player for a while, but, um, so we just jammed for all that way, practiced, started writing some originals, and we recorded our first demo that way, I, I played bass on the first demo and guitar, and then only sang and we had rhythm guitar and drums. But then after a while, just like right after that, you started playing bass, right? Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah, they took the base. Yeah, they took the base about a year after that. And then in '84, and like around September. Yeah, yeah, September. Mark came in on vocals, and then just sang like one song, and Rob sang a couple songs. But now Mark did, the vo you know, he does most of the vocal duties now. <laughs> Our debut album, The Ultraviolence, is now out. It's on Enigma Records, and we now have a video on Much Music, and it's distributed, distributed by Capital. Distributed by Capital basically Records. everywhere. And we have a video for the song Voracious Souls, which we've yet to see, which supposedly you guys have. You do. And we still have two more weeks for the U.S. tour, so if we're doing any northern shows, people from Canada can probably cross the border and check it out. You can make it past customs <laughs> without the friendly dogs that we ran into. <laughs> Well, you saw me last time trying to cook an insole, a wristsole, a diversole, whatever. Soul singing. Cooking is all about not wasting anything. I hate to see waste, especially when you know that people all over the world, in Africa and everything, are starving. It's tragic. OK, all you rock stars out there, all you people with all the money, we had Live Aid and all that stuff, but I think charity begins in the home. So here's a way to use all those little pieces you have left over after your plastic surgery, after you've had your crow's feet taken off, after you've had the bits added on, blown up, pumped up, taken out, all that stuff. Don't waste it, for example. All those fatty little pop groups who drink too much Jack, you know, gross up. Don't waste all your fat after liposuction. Hang on to it, it's tasty. You know, fed up with your nose? Mmm. Lovely. Fed up your nose? Want to have it changed? OK, no problem. But waste not, want not. After that nose job, OK, I really needed a llama's foot for this. But instead, I phoned an international rock star and he sent me his nose before surgery. This nose he's hung on to for years. We're going to have a little pig out in this microwave here. Here is the insole that I had cooked before. I'm going to put this, we're going to have insole a la all right? That's French for insole a la All right, we put a little sole in here, right? That We look at that, that looks absolutely disgusting. Throw the fish out, we don't need that. That's been used already and that's not funny. So, we put a little bit of liposuction fat on here from that famous group. <coughs> and we'll put it all in the microwave here. Here we go, that's very nice, thank you. Light the microwave in here. Ah, oh, the pilot's gone out. OK, next. I see the problem. We need a video. Iron Maiden, wasted years. Who put him in here? You are watching much music, and this is Deep Purple. Dun, 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 next up, Wasp, dun, TNT, dun, and David dun, Lee Roth dun, on the Power Hour. Well, fans, it all comes down to this moment. This is where it all gets decided. Johnson steps in, checks the signs, makes a few adjustments. This is a classic confrontation. He's digging in. Here's the delivery. And there it goes. He's going back, back, way back. It is going, going. It is gone. Pepsi, the choice of a new generation. The ball game's over. Laurie Brown with you on the Pepsi Power Hour. I figured out what's going on here. You see, obviously, uh, Paul and Dinah have been to the exhibition like three or four times too many this year round, and they've, they've got the movement in them, and they just can't just quite keep still. So 
I hope you're all not uh, nauseous by the end of this show, and I'm, I'm not because I'm staying quite still, but I don't know what it's like for you people. And speaking of vintage metal, having Lee Aaron with the Metal Queen, we have a Stone Age Power Hour coming up on September the 10th. We've got some never-before-seen footage. We've got Dazed and Confused by Led Zeppelin and also All Along the Watchtower by Jimi Hendrix, some footage, some live stuff you've never seen before. So if you want to see some real old stuff, make sure you tune in on September the 10th. Coming up, we've got some David Lee Roth with Going Crazy and also TNT, 10,000 Lovers in One. And first off, we've got some Wasp. Now, when Blackie Lawless was in the last time, he told me that if he wasn't in a heavy metal band, he'd probably be in jail because the release that he gets out of playing, it keeps him sane in the streets. And if you talk to him, absolutely normal. The man's not normal on stage, let's face it. And he hopes that the people watching the concerts get the same kind of release. Here's Wasp with Wild Child on the Pepsi Power Hour. It's <laughs> White Snake, White Wolf, and Great White on the Pepsi Power Hour. Lori Brown on the Pepsi Power Hour. Welcome to my mind. Yes, this is what's going on on the inside of my mind. I know Steve Anthony has little thought balloons, but this is really what it's like. It's in color. But the nice thing about heavy metal is that it's all in black and white. Most of them wear black, but some people, like in this next set, with White Snake, Still the Night, White Wolf, Shadows in the Night, and also Great White off the top. There are some white men in heavy metal. This is their song, Rock Me, and I love the beginning of this song. It's a tremendous ballad. These guys are more interested in way, the way their music sounds, what they put on vinyl, as opposed to the way they look. But I just wish they'd get this girl back in the water. Here they are. You know, wherever I go, people come up to me and say, like, you never play enough Cinderella on the Power Hour. You never play enough Motley Crue. Oh, we've come up with a way to figure that out and to fix it up. And that's the All Request Power Hour. And we've got one coming up on September 24th. So write us in and tell us what you want us to play. And the five best letters da -da -da -da, are going to get a T-shirt that look like this. It is a molten T-shirt, huh? So what you have to do is, is send in your requests to the All Request Power Hour, Much Music, 299 Queen Street West, Toronto, Ontario, M5V2Z5. And get them in in a hurry because the Power Hour is on the All Request Power Hour, September 24th. Coming up now, hey, we got some Cinderella for you. Some Pretty Maze with Future World, but first here's Cinderella with Somebody Save Me. Well, that's about it for the Pepsi Power Hour this week, but just to remind you, remember we've got that Stone Age Power Hour on September 10th and also the All Request Power Hour on the 21st, 21st, sorry, 24th, when you can get one of these fabulous t-shirts, and I'll promise I'll wash it before like I, I give it to whoever wins, so we're going to leave you with some striper. Well, my microphone's down here. We're going to leave you with some striper on the Pepsi Power Hour, Molten. <laughs> 